Tommy and Teresa, it strikes me just thinking back, uh, you know, remembering watching this parade as a kid, how you would wait for hours hoping to see that face or two that you know. My dad marched to the parade with the FDNY for many years. And you realize it's a big deal, especially if you're a parent maybe and your kids are a member of the North Allegheny High School marching band or whatever group you might be. This is a big moment. They rehearse, practice all year, and then here's their big moment. Let's take a listen to them right now. What a group. 200 musicians came today and they fundraised to come here to New York, all these bands. Amazing. Just to walk in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Fantastic. And so much work as well. There's a lot of early morning rehearsals, a lot of weekends, yes. and it pays off like this. President is uh, Judy Greenberg, treasurer Wendy Muller. Taking photographs to be in the back. As the band moves up the avenue, we're going to head downstairs to Sarah Wallace, who has a guest from Iona University. Sarah, take it away. Yes, I do. Dr. Seamus Carey is joining us on the parade route. Talk to me about Iona's history with this parade. Well, Iona's uh, widely known as America's Irish University because we've been founded by the Christian Brothers. And our patron saint, St. Columba, is the uh, founder of the Iona Monastery back in the Isle of Iona. And so that's where our name comes from. And so our history is steeped in Irish culture and Irish America. And we do know that the Grand Marshal this year is an alumna of Iona. We're so proud of Maggie. Uh, Maggie is such an incredible person. She's had an amazing success in her career, but Maggie gives back to the community and she serves on our board of trustees. And it's a pleasure to work with Maggie. Maggie, I understand. Maggie Timony, by the way, got a scholarship to play basketball at Iona. She did, and she was an outstanding basketball player at Iona, and the leadership skills she showed as a player at the time have translated into her success as a professional and a trailblazer in her career. You talked about the university having a foundation in Ireland, and I understand there's some exciting news about a new campus there. That's right. We're opening a new campus in Westport, Mayo, at the uh, Westport House Estate, and our first student class will be going there in May, in a couple of months. And we're incredibly excited to work with the folks out at Biddy Hughes and Barry O'Connor. And the people of Westport Mayo have been incredibly gracious to host us there in Westport Mayo. So we're excited for our students to get over there and study there. Wonderful news. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. You, Congratulations on your day. Back to you in the booth. All right. Our thanks to you, Sarah. And right now we're taking a look at County Kevin. There's County Cabin Association, founded in 1848. The banner, the front is Miles Slasher O'Reilly, and on the back is St. Patrick. And Patrick Rudden is doing a great job there, keeping the lines in order. Father Martin O'Reilly is there as well. Paul Smith is the president. Michael McGivney is there. Marit Tully is there. And uh, you have somebody that came out from Glasgow today, is that right? I certainly have. Peter and Marion Lynch, all the way from Glasgow. And they hail from Ballylion. And also Mary Hiron is out there. And she is holding the American flag today. Rosie O'Reilly, her husband, Michael O'Reilly, and past president, was an aide to the Grand Marshal today for the United Irish Counties. And we have the Kerry Pipers in the background there playing a very nice 
We have some music for us here as well, and we are going to the Kerry Association. Yes, there we have the front of the band of St. Brendan, the Navigator. Saved this fifth century, almost a hundred years, it said before, Christopher Columbus. And the back is Thomas Ash, the Irish Patriot. And Frank O'Keefe, of course, and Mary O'Keefe, very prominent there. And uh, Jerry O'Shea is there, and Kathleen Meehan. I know she's watching from home. And the mayor of Kerry is John Finucan is out there, and Sean Brosnan. He's wearing a very special sack today, Tommy, um, because he is commemorating his 70 years anniversary of being a member of the County Kerry Association. God bless him. The president is Maura Barrett, the vice president, Eileen Murphy. Sean Fenton is there, Tom O'Sullivan, Eileen Murphy, Eileen Collins, very involved in the parade. They're marching well up the avenue today, Brian Smith and Donald Quinn. And I'd like to say hello to Julia Foley, a good Kerry woman out there watching today. Oh, Kerry, of course, famous for their Gaelic football team and uh, the Sathers. Two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Kerry. And Frank O'Keefe is there with his hand up in the air with a stick. There he is with Mary O'Keefe. <laughs> I have to say thank Jerry you. Jerry O'Shea is there. Frank. <laughs> there he is, Jerry. <laughs> thank you to Frank O'Keefe. And Danica. The and Danica, past president of the county Kerry, like Danica Costello. I know his wife Angela is very proud of him today, marching up at Kerry. Oh, my Lord. Look at the Kerry crew. There's nobody left in Kerry today at all. Look at them. They're all here on Fifth <laughs> Avenue. They're very well They're represented. Everywhere, That's Jerry. Sure. <laughs> Jerry O'Shea, of course, he's a, the historian. And uh, Alan Murphy. Well, I've the same passage is great right after this message. The St. Patrick's Day Parade on Fifth Avenue is made possible thanks to generous donations from viewers like you. Let's celebrate and support the parade. Donate now at nycstpatricksparade.org. Well, on a day like this, you wouldn't want to be anywhere but New York City if you watch the St. Patrick's today. But if you're thinking of a trip to Ireland, well, we have a resource for you now as we head back to Sarah Wallace, who has a guest. Sarah? Well, Gus, I'm standing with Alison Metcalf, who's the Executive Vice President of Tourism Ireland. Let me just ask you, if I want to go off the beaten path, what would you suggest? Well, first of all, I, I would suggest spending a couple of days in Dublin and then heading out into the um, into the countryside. So maybe head down to Wicklow um, or take one of our food tours. And since it's St. Patrick's Day, people might want to really get off the beaten track. They might want to go to County Mayo and climb uh, St. Patrick or Slemish Mountain in County Antrim. Those are mountains that are associated with St. Patrick. And, of course, it is, is, a, is a great time to... Um, get out and enjoy some of the outdoor activities that we have, some of our greenways, some of our blueways, people that like to be active, so uh, cycling and walking, and of course we have the new St. Patrick's Trail, uh, which goes from, runs from um, Armagh to County Down, so lots of outdoor activities, but I think when people go to Ireland, so particularly at this time of the year when they're thinking about planning their trip, they're thinking about covering some of the uh, the main attractions, like you know Ring of Kerry and, and also Giant's Causeway, but they always want to get off the beaten track, it's the best way to meet the locals, and experience the real island. So if I go to order in a restaurant and I want something that's a little different, what would I order? Well, I think um, Irish food has, got, has had a, an amazing culinary revolution. So I think if you want to order something rather than an Irish stew, order some fresh wild salmon and some wonderfully baked brown bread. They're two of my favorites. Um, wherever you travel around the island of Ireland, the food is amazing. We have incredible ingredients. And as we like to say, we're never very far from the sea. So the, the oysters, the fresh salmon um, are wonderful. And I think when you travel around Ireland, you'll find that many of the restaurants love to tell you about where those ingredients have come from, the food provenance. So the food is tremendous. And I think that's the one area of a vacation that sometimes surprises people. And that's making me hungry as we speak. I think I'm going to go order lunch right now. <laughs> Back to you in the booth. Uh, Sarah, it's making me hungry. It makes me want to head to the airport, too. you guys got our pieces covered there. Thanks very much. Well, I'm not getting hungry, but I'm looking for money because uh, the QR code is there. And if you would like to support the parade, if you would like to help keep this parade on Fifth Avenue every year, uh, Sean Lane and Hilary Byrne would ask you to please. The QR code is on the screen now. If you can click onto it and make some kind of a donation. And incidentally, while we were standing there listening to the last interview, Roisin Wiley 
who won the Rose of Truly representing New York this year. A fantastic, fantastic day for New York. And there were so many Rose of Truly's that went by there. Oh my there? goodness, every Rose of Truly since the festival started in 1962 just marched past us. Especially uh, D uh, Denise O'Sullivan who put it all together and her husband Tommy marching. Fantastic, fantastic. What are we at now, Gus? We have a lovely pipe band. Let's hear that lovely sound. The United States Corps of Cadets. Today is a very special day for a lot of people. I'd like to give a shout out to happy birthday greetings to Alexa Murray, um, Anne Hogan, listening at home, Eileen Griffin, Michelle O'Mahony, oh my history consultant, her mom. She made me a lovely, lovely hat, and she she used to. Don't, don't ask me where it is. Oh, you have. It, I have it. I'm, I'm going I to put it on my I head. I I forgot it. I'm, I'm going to put it on. She made. She knitted it specially for me. The woman is 92. I have to say, give her a shout out. She's way back in West Cork, Mara. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful hat. I will wear it proudly. Once again, we're headed back down to Sarah Wallace. She has another guest. Sarah, how you doing? Well, good. Gus, I'm standing here with the managing director of CIE Tours. And if families are interested in trying to get a bargain right now to Ireland, planning for the summer, yeah. what would you suggest? Well, we, we, have, we have the biggest selection of tours all around Ireland. We have over 20 tours of Ireland. We have really popular combinations of a week in Scotland and a week in Ireland. So, you know, we, we go to every corner of Ireland. We use the best visits. We go to the Giant's Causeway, we go to the Cliffs of Moher, we go to the Guinness Storehouse, we kiss the Blarney Stone, and loads of surprises in between. So, highly recommend going with us. We, we, one big thing that we do different from other people, we include everything in our price. It's all in. So there's no extra options or no evening entertainment that you have to purchase. It's all included in our price. And that's what our customers tell us they love about traveling to CI Tours. Is there a favorite type of tour that you're seeing? Well, we, we've, we've the Irish Adventure Tour. It goes all the way around Ireland. So it takes about nine, ten nights. And you pack so much in. It's go, go, go. You need a holiday when you come back home. But people absolutely love it. It's one of our best sellers. But we've got the Irish Adventure, the Irish Gold, the Taste of Ireland. All the tours are super. They really, truly are super. Um, people, our customers tell us that they, they absolutely love them. And are you seeing an uptick right now in summer travel? Yeah, we, last year was a super year for us after COVID. We really, really came back strong. We are, we are really, really happy with it. This year, 2024, is shaping up the same way. So if we can do the same this year as we did last year, we'd be really happy with that. So exciting. It's exciting to try to plan a summer vacation. I'm thinking about it right now. Now is the time. Now Thank, is the time. You. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. Back to you in the booth. Okay, Sarah, thanks very much. More of the parade coming up right here on WNBC. They say about 2 million people are watching this parade in person, and I'm thinking of all the other people who are watching our broadcast around the Tri-State area on WNBC. And also this year we're streaming internationally, so you can be anywhere in the world and be oh, watching yeah. our parade today. I have friends, the O'Hertzens on the Upper West Side, just told me they're watching. I have a friend in Switzerland who's watching on his phone right now. So a true international event as the world comes together to celebrate here in New York City. And we go once again to Sarah Wallace, who's joined, by, joined with Hillary. We burn, of course, a very important part of the parade. Sarah? Well, Gus, can you imagine the logistics of trying to put this all together? And this is the man responsible. Tell me right now how it's going. It sure does look good to me. Well, we have a lot bigger crowd than we anticipated today. So the parade is running a little slow, but it's running very smoothly. Um, the groups are coming out fantastic. And needless to say, the weather is cooperating. And it's a Saturday in New York City. When you have a St. Patrick's Day on a Saturday, huge crowds come out, especially when the weather is good. And today is a beautiful day. When I came up from St. Patrick's Cathedral after interviewing the Archbishop, it was just amazing to see the crowd. Yeah, an enormous crowds, as I said. Uh, and the parade, like we have over 200 bands today and, and 200 marching groups. So, as I said to the member of the police department, expect overtime today. 
a lot of overtime. But that, they'll welcome that, by the way. But what is the secret for getting it so organized? Because you really pull it off. Well, we have a great team. And uh, I'm working the parade 30-something years, and I've been putting the parade together for almost 20. So after a while, you get used to the institutional knowledge of who goes where and all of that. And groups have marched in the parade, as you know, since 1762. And they know exactly what is expected when they come to New York City to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So exciting that people are actually streaming this around the world. What message would you say to them? Uh, uh, almost a, a for, almost half of our audience is, is international at this stage with the streaming. And I have to say, I wish everybody in the entire world a happy St. Patrick's Day from the greatest city in the world, New York City. I will certainly echo that. Thank you so much. Back to you in the booth. Okay, Sarah, thanks to you and Hillary as well. And I would just love to go on the words that Henry Bond said. He said there's so many volunteers that work at the parade. I would love to pull back the curtains and, and just take advantage of our parade workers and behind the scenes who all do amazing work and it wouldn't be possible without them. Scott Presbytino and Teresa, Noel Ryan, Dolores Walsh, she heads with the AIDS. She's unbelievable this morning. Veronica Barry, Frank O'Keefe, Bridget O'Brien, our media person, her son, Desmond and daughter Fallon O'Brien. Katie Barrett, she read at the church this morning. Un unbelievable people who put all the banquets together. Jennifer Clare, Bill Lewis, Cathy Hogan, who does the journal every year with me, Eileen Markle, Michael O'Reilly, Tom Tuffy and Brendan Benn. Oh, Tommy, they're all amazing people. What would we do without them? Well, Brendan Benn is a, a big family man too. He's a big union man and uh, I know his wife and kids are watching at home today. This. And uh, Brendan's sister, Tara, is also watching at home today. Yeah. Yes, Valerie is watching at home. Brendan, absolutely amazing the work he does. And I say, all saying hello to Dad this morning. Brendan Ben. So many people waving the families that are home watching right now. I always think back to my own memories. Yeah, my grandmother was Irish, was born on St. Patrick's Day. Oh. So it was always a big deal at our house. We'd watch the parade, watch my father march up the green line that you can see right there. And we'd cook, the, my mother would do all the cooking. I had to give her full credit. She did a great job. And we'd watch the parade and all come together and wait for dad to come home. It was just yeah, all those memories. You used the phrase going home before, and it just really caught my ear. So this day, it takes you back. And you see the crowds, you hear the bagpipes, and it's just such a, a warm feeling in the, in the city right oh now. Oh my God. I, you know, hearing the bagpipes, I always tell this story. When I was a child at home, it does bring me back home. Yeah. I used to sit on the hill on a sunny day and my neighbours would get out, the neighbour on the left of our house would get out his bagpipes. At the end of the island in Cove, another neighbour would get out his bagpipes. The two would take a little while to sync up the tunes and they would play and we would just sit there and, and, and the shamrocks and the daisies and make daisy chains and listen to them. Fantastic. We'll have more of the St. Patrick's Day Parade in just a moment here on WNBC. And you're welcome back here to Fifth Avenue, the Queen of Avenues, and uh, the crowd is really enjoying it. Uh, the bands are flowing, the, the people on the stands are cheering them, and we're going down to Sarah, who has a guest here with us from uh, Catholic Health. Yes, Tommy, I do. This is Dr. Patrick O'Shaughnessy. Yes. O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> Obviously a very important name today. Talk to me about your organization's commitment to this parade. It's really special. At Catholic Health, we feel so aligned with the mission, vision, and values of the parade and St. Patrick. And uh, it's just such a blessing to be here. We're all about family and community. And St. Patrick's Day brings us together. We're all Irish today. And you also mentioned that today is especially honoring women in the Irish community. Talk to me about Yes, that. so, so important. At Catholic Health, we have over 17,000 amazing healthcare heroes. So many of them are women from our amazing physicians, surgeons, our healthcare executives, our nurses, and probably the most uh, amazing part, we were founded over a hundred years ago by our founding sisters who really started Catholic Health to be able to give back to the community. So we're so, so, so very grateful to be able to continue to do that to the people of Long Island. And tell me a little personally about the O'Shaughnessy oh, connection. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, I remember being a little boy actually sitting on the curb. My dad was a New York City 
police officers so coming to the parade was tradition. What an honor and privilege to represent this amazing health system and actually get to do this with my family. And you don't have to sit on the side today. I don't. I actually get to march. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so well, much. Thanks for being thank here you. and for all you thank do. Thank you. And long live Long Island. Back to you. In the all room. right. Sarah, thank you. Well, a fellow Long Islander whose dad was also in the civil service. My dad, of course, a member of the FDNY. The FDNY marching here. You'll see their banner, the 343, marking those firefighters that lost their lives on 9-11, a, a number that continues to grow, as it's noted. The FDNY, always a proud and momentous moment here in the parade. Let's Good. watch and, and give a moment of silence as we honor those who have served. We will, we will never forget. And it's, it's felt that it's carried every year by the probies. It's felt that it gives them a good introduction to the fire department, the sense of duty, public service and marching, the ultimate service. And we thank you all for your service. We sincerely do. And we never will forget. And we have all the families here at the fire department, uh, all the families marching in support of the men who keep our city safe. Well, they truly are the bravest, and we appreciate everything they do each and every day. And, of course, we think, too, of their families every day. You know, you, the firefighters go out, and they, they protect us. And we also think of their families who, who, who give them to us every day to keep us safe. And we see some of those families marching here as well. Yeah, I always remember, you know, people said when they were running out of the towers, they were running down, and the firemen were running up. They do that every day. They, they run in where everybody else runs out. We appreciate it. Fire Department traces the truce back to 1648 when volunteers proud parole the streets with buckets, hooks and ladders. And this, I should note again, is the first time I ever heard my name spoken on television was my dad was marching as he was going by the viewing stand. I was so six or seven and he shouted, hi, Gussie. <laughs> said one, one of the cameras. One well, of the few people who call me Gussie. That would be my dad. Okay. That was proud. And uh, his, his older brother, also a member of the FBNY, back in the day. It's great that. to see. Hey, John by the way, I'm talking about watching at home. Uh, it's worth noting that our coverage today continuing on broadcast here on WNBC until 2 o'clock. With you until 2. And then, kind of an added bonus this year, we mentioned streaming. We'll be streaming from 2 to 3 commercial free so you can catch that on things like cozy tv and also all our streaming platforms as well so you can stream it maybe on your smart tv if you're headed out on your phone as well the nbc new york app and all of those things so we have that going for you and that goes from two to three uh, so the broadcast until two golf turns on but the parade continues as we stream and stream internationally i heard from someone who's in austria watching yeah. the parade it's absolutely I just, amazing i just heard from someone in monaghan the murrays are watching at monaghan and uh, you know it's uh, there's uh, all kinds of families watching all around the world i know they're watching in knockbridge as well they're probably watching it in cove they are my my twin sister sinead is watching in cove and kevin and johnny they're all watching more of the St. Patrick's Day Parade right after this. Oh, and yes, we are back on Fifth Avenue. What a day it is. The fire department have been going through here for the last 10 minutes or so, and we have the barcode on there again, the QR barcode. If you would like to donate to the parade, make sure that the parade stays on the avenue every year. That's the place to go, and we're having so much fun here. We've got, John, yeah, John? We have the Seaford High School marching band here. Go Vikings. they got the green flags going strong. Let's watch the troop here and listen to some of their music.
funny when you say you listen to the music all they do is play the drums so I'm going to talk about uh, three little uh, kids across the street from our house in Queens uh, Mina, Morgan and James McCarthy Arlene and Kathleen who were so good to be down in Dr Kite's office Mary and Bill who were also on the street Mike McMurray who uh, watches the parade from across the street from our house every year he'd be watching it next year from Florida and uh, Joan Hensley wants to remind all the Gaelic fans that the GA Mayo are coming out to play in New York in the newly refurbished Gaelic Park. So Joan would like to see everybody up there. And it was great to see Tony Dalton. Tony Dalton was a basketball player. He played against uh, Maggie in Dublin. And he's in uh, Atlanta now, but he still he came to see her while she was here today. And that band director here is Anthony Roma, Barbara Sheeran, and Nicholas Kushim is the musical teachers. And speaking about neighbours, Etna Breen, I know you're watching at home, Etna. Our son John just came up and said hello to us. That's right, and Danny Hogan, our other neighbour, they and came over to say hello. His, his mum celebrates her birthday today. That's right, Anne Hogan, I always give her a little happy birthday and hope you have a wonderful day and happy St. Patrick's Day to you all listening, wherever you're listening all over the world. We're delighted to have you here. And the Grand Marshal, Maggie, is waving to everybody over there. And the Emerald Society of the FDNY marching past the reviewing stand there. And Tressa, that's worth noting. The Grand Marshal does the march up and then comes back to watch some of the parade here in the viewing stand. Is that how it works? That's how it works. And she will stand there and wave and greet everybody until the parade ends. So that there is some work involved in that. There is have, some work. I mean, the weather's working out this year, but some years we've had. That's always the thing about mid-March in New York. You can have any sort of weather situation. We've done this parade in the rain. We've, got, we've done it in the snow. And so to have a day like today, we're we're awfully uh, luckily Irish in that department, for sure. Yes, That's for sure. And you insinuated that the Grand Marshal does no work. <laughs> Actually, the day that I was Grand Marshal, I marched, I came back, and I did the rest of the parade again, here on again. television. But you did both. I did both. You multitask. Just that's like Trasha really did good. today. She, she came back here. But that's it's the fire department still going by here. And, uh, you know, we depend so much on them. Our lives are in their hands every day. And, you know, speaking about Maggie Timoney, our Grand Marshal, today as we ma marched behind her the aides, she ran back and forth to everybody, hugged everybody, shook hands with everybody. She had a workout today. She had a great time. Members of the Uniformed Firefighters Association in this uh, battalion. Well, there's so many people here on Fifth Avenue and the visual coming now, you can see the flag starting to up and down and uh, it's a, a beautiful sight to see the Franklin band coming and they are a band, I mean folks, they are a band, the size of them and many people are in it. Oh my goodness, they are absolutely amazing, they look amazing, it's so nice to see the bands not being cold marching and they're having so much fun. As it's you contagious. Say, the Franklin High School marching band. And when you look down Fifth Avenue, you just see that sea of humanity. I mean, it's going all the way down to the mid-40s there, band after band, group after group, and, of course, millions along the sidelines here. Millions. I think there were 20 deep when we walked up this when morning. When you were coming up this morning, It was yeah. just packed. Yeah, and they're all cheering you on. And all the kids were done up, the adults were done up. It's they adorable, so many outfits of the kids. <laughs> all in <laughs> green. Great. It was absolutely amazing. It is. I mean, it's, it's a big cliche to say today when everyone's Irish, but it's true. I mean, no matter who you are in New York, you're somehow connected to this. Well, we see the band there. We're getting a good view of them. Not getting much of their sound, but uh, it's certainly nice to see them, isn't it? And uh, Bill Lynn, um, the business manager of local Torte, his mom, Bridget, is from Killala County Mayo. And I saw her recently at the United Irish Counties Dinner Dance. She is very proud of her son, Bill, being honoured at the dinner dance. What age is she? She is 92, I believe. God bless her. Well, they're playing now, Tommy. They heard you. They so heard you. <laughs> trying to conduct them because, because they don't want any part of me. Look at the music has stopped again. And 
when you talk about it, you know, I've just heard from Seamus and Anne Louise McCabe from Ballinaid in County Monaghan and their movie star son Matty in London. He was one of the main characters in the, the movie Irish Wish on Netflix. So, you know, this has some scope, this parade, Gus. Right now we're gonna check back in with Sarah Wallace. Sarah? Well, Gus, I'm standing here with Andrew Ansborough, who is the president of the Uniform Firefighters Association. Talk to me about how important this is for your members to be a part of this. Well, a lot of my members, such as myself, they were brought up on the St. Patrick's Day Parade. When I was a young, uh, when I was a kid, my father was in with the NYPD, would bring me to the parade and I'd watch him march. And then I was a police officer a few years, and I would march with him. And then he retired. I became a uh, firefighter, and he would watch me march. And uh, a lot of the families here, they have a huge family tradition for it. And uh, for us, you know, events like this, they're sacred. You know, they're, they're the events you do every year, and they mean a lot to the families of, fire, uh, you know, of Irish descent. But all, all fire department families, they enjoy this. Yeah, we're put on display, and it's a big sign of pride. And we notice something very special that happens, and it's a moment always in this parade, the 343 Honor Company flag detail. Talk about that and what that tribute means. Right, well, the 343 flag detail was started after September 11th, where we lost 343 firefighters in one hour. And, uh, you know, they've become to symbolize, you know, the loss that this department has taken on for the city. And we've lost over 150 firefighters to cancer since then. So it's not just a 343, it's all New York City firefighters. And we hold these events as sacred. You know, all of our events we hold sacred, whether it be a parade or a graduation or a promotion. We had a graduation on Wednesday. I went to the graduation and the families were there. And these are the events that are the, there for the families. The families love them. And uh, it shows, we show the family our good side and, and our, how we're sharp and we're proud and everything we do. And it reminded my own graduation, you know, 23 years ago. But after my graduation, it was only a few short weeks. Where it was summer 2001, we lost six of our members from my class alone. And the next event that my members went to, their families went to, was when we were carrying their loved ones into a church. So all of these events are sacred to us, and we need to keep it that way, and we, you know, we love it. Well, we all want to say that we appreciate every day what your members do, their courage, their sacrifice, and what they do for us here in New York City. Thank you for being with Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Back Hi, to Mom. you in the booth. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, Sarah. Thank you very much. Uh, celebration and commemoration as well here at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Morning.